Calling all curious adventurers and puzzling pioneers. Today we are exploring a trove of tactical triumphs as we enter the ancient ruins of Block and Key in this episode of Little Big Thumb. Welcome to Little Big Thumbs, a channel that's all about finding games that are equally fun for both little players and big players. My name is JP, and today we're diving into the captivating world of Block and Key, a visually stunning and strategically engaging experience for one to four players that lasts about 30 minutes. The game is published by Inside Up Games, and it's designed by David Van Druden with artwork from Edu Vaz. And in the interest of full disclosure, the publisher did send us a complimentary copy of the game to make this video possible, and while I think that doesn't sway our opinions on the game, it's important for you to know that before we get rolling. We're going to start with a very quick overview of the gameplay, but since there have been already so many great tutorial videos made for Block and Key, I'm going to link to one of my favorites from the lovely folks at Before You Play in the description of this video. So if you want to learn how to play step by step, make sure you check out that link in the description. And if you want to skip ahead to other sections of this video, you will also find some timestamped links in that description. Maybe you just want to know how my kids got along with the game and you don't care so much about my personal opinions. That's fine. No hard feelings. Just hit that timestamp link and you'll be on your way. Okay, enough ramble bamble from this guy. Let's get on with the overview and our thoughts on Block and Key. <laughs> We often talk about games bringing something truly unique to the table, but Block and Key literally takes that to a whole other level. It's a game in which we're playing in a three-dimensional environment, but scoring from a two-dimensional perspective. Each turn, we're either drafting a row or column of blocks from the lower level of the board, or placing a block on the upper level. And while this two-tiered board may seem a little gimmicky, I find and feel that it's absolutely necessary. And that's because these scoring cards require each player to look at the upper board straight on, placing blocks in a way that creates patterns that match their key cards. It would simply be frustrating and maybe even downright uncomfortable if both of these boards were flat on the table. The placement of the blocks here is really interesting. The big points to remember being that a block can either sit on the board touching another piece corner to corner or a piece can be touching flat surfaces with another piece so long as the block you're adding winds up sitting taller than any block that it's touching. So we're constantly trying to manipulate that three-dimensional environment so that it benefits our two-dimensional perspective. I don't think that any amount of words that I can say here would properly convey that. It's really a game that you need to sit down and experience to really truly appreciate. As far as the scoring goes, the end game comes around once one player has completed a certain number of key cards, which varies based on the number of players playing the game. Once we hit that threshold, everybody gets one more turn, and then we count up our points from our key cards, as well as our enigma cards, which were assigned at the beginning of the game and will give us one point for every three blocks of a certain color that we can see from our side of the table. So that's a loosey-goosey overview of the game. Overall opinion of block and key, it's fun to look at, it's quick to play, the blocks themselves feel amazing in my hands, and the choices are easy to break down for new players. And while those block placement rules can be a little tricky to wrap our heads around at first, once it clicks, you'll never have to remind yourself about that part of the game again. It's kind of like riding a bike. I'm always impressed when a game uses the box as part of the gameplay, but in this one, there's literally no part of the packaging that isn't a key element. Even the box sleeve, which I normally hate for a game, is necessary to keep this slender box closed when it's on your shelf. Kudos to Inside Up Games on a really space-conscious and innovative package. Now, I've played a, a few games from Inside Up so far, and this one, so far, hands down, is my favorite. And that's keeping in mind that I haven't yet played their blockbuster hit, Earth, yet. But this one, Block and Key, is really, really, really good. Now, in this next part of the video, we are going to fulfill our Little Big Thumbs mission of looking at how this game plays with both little players and big players. Then we'll take a very quick look at the solo mode before we wrap things up. Transitioning business, here we go. 
you just heard my overall thoughts on block and key a moment ago, and those same thoughts apply when we're playing with a group of adults. No kids. We've seen lots of Tetris-esque 3D puzzlers over the years, and while this game loosely fits into that genre, the block drafting from the bottom board is something really different in that it forces us to take three in a row and wrestle with how best to use them. Players who are really in the zone can set themselves up to score two or more cards with a single block placement, which is mind-blowing to me. I think some of that might be the luck of the draw when it comes to the key cards, and yes, sometimes I do do wish there was a way to refresh the cards in my hand. But I'd much rather have a 20 to 30 minute game with the occasional victim of randomization than a longer game that offers us more card control. Okay, so that's the big thumbs experience. Now let's talk those little thumbs. I've played block and key with both my six-year-old and eight-year-old daughters, and they both found the game to be super cool in their own unique ways. For our games, we kept our key cards face up on the table so that I could give them some guidance when they were stuck. In our first games, we also offset the complexity of the game by forcing me to only draw from the moon deck of cards, which are much, much more tricky to complete than the star and sun cards. My older daughter had some difficulty wrapping her head around the block placement rules at first, and visualizing her side of the upper board, but with a few helpful suggestions, she soon started picking up the idea of the game. And after a few plays of block and key, my big bean became a reasonably competent and competitive player. On the other hand, my younger daughter just loved drafting blocks and being in charge of refreshing that lower board after a row of blocks were drafted. I helped her finish a couple of cards throughout our games. But the key point here is not that she was going to be trying to find a way to win the game, but that she could be actively participating in every turn without taking away from the experience from other players. That binary decision space makes this game exceedingly accessible. And while I wouldn't say that my kids were as smitten with block and key as I was, I also would say that they probably wouldn't ever turn down the opportunity to play again. That being said, Block and Key is probably not a game that will be their first choice to pull off the shelves for our own family game time. Block and Key also includes an 11 turn solo mode, which uses iconography in the corners of the cards to cycle through blocks and setting the stage for players to strive for their best possible score. It's a really quick and neat way to experience the game, although I'd say if you are strictly a solo player, Block and Key probably isn't going to give you that satisfying long haul experience, but still a fantastic option to have inside the box. I so wanted to give Block and Key the Golden Thumb Award, and taking my kids out of the equation, I really, really adore this game. And while my kids and I did find ways to level the playing field and find the fun for everyone at the table, I would not say that this game was a smash hit for them. For children a bit older than mine, I think this game will be very accessible, and the game really clicked with every adult player I introduced it to. It's unique and a fun, puzzly challenge that I'd love to see more people People playing, even if it was not a perfect match for young children like my own. If number scores matter to you, we'll say that the big thumb score for Block and Key is 8 out of 10, and the little thumb score is 6. And that wraps up our look at Block and Key. If you enjoyed this content and want to see more of the same, make sure to subscribe to Little Big Thumbs so you can follow along with our board gaming journey. Thank you to Inside Up Games for sending us a copy of Block and Key, and thank you to all of you for watching along. And until next time, whether you've got little players or big players, make sure that you keep playing games that make your thumbs go way up. Bye for now.